And this is recess. Lots of games and fun. You know, the very first people to live in Louisiana played our drink games, too. And both neighborhoods of homes in the wild forest, the native Indian tribes were the first Louisianians. Many of them are still around today. Would you like to pay a visit? Come on. This is my travel secret. Watch. Sheraton. That's where we can see some Indians living in Louisiana today. But let's take a look back first. F. Looks like it's New Monroe. Are you ready? Now when I count to three, you say Gumbo Island. Here we go. One, two, three. Gumbo Island. This must be Epps. Come on. Hi, Brett. I'm Dennis Labatt, manager here at Poverty Point, one of the oldest archaeological sites in North America. But you know, as much as we know about Poverty Point, there's still an awful lot of mystery here, and I'd like to share that with you. Come on. Vincent says that Poverty Point is not an ancient name. You're right, Brett, it, it's not. And I guess that adds to some of the mystery here. As near as we can tell, this was a plantation by that name by about 1850. Okay, in order to start the cooking process, some of the kids, when they watch me do this, they, they want to call this magic mud. But there's really nothing magic about it at all. This Mason Ridge is a real fine, wind-blown dirt. And there aren't a whole lot of clays in it. So it makes it nice and uh, smooth when you work with it. Like, like so. This is why the kids call it magic mud. Because you can take that lump. Making these shapes, we feel like maybe they were arranging the heat on their fire using those different shapes. And the other neat thing about the different shapes is it makes them easier to handle with all those little grooves on. It makes them a lot easier to handle. Now that we have allowed our cooking stones to air dry, we're ready to put them into the fire and get them red hot and uh, ready to do our cooking. Before I do that, I've taken some of the cattail frond and uh, wove them. And I call this kind of a simple Girl Scout weave. Perhaps you're familiar with that. This, uh, this is what we're after here. That nice good green piece. Okay, and then we'll get our catfish ready. And this fish is uh, much like they would have used here long ago. And you know, on some of our sites, we also find uh, deep water red snapper. Not only had a taste for good fish, but real good fish. And I'll take this. How hot does it get? About 1,100 degrees. I, I, that's, a, that's an extremely hot fire. So they probably ate a lot of blackened fish. Doesn't I know. But, and now you're not limited to fish. Mm. You can put anything that you would like into this pit. And it's real simple from here. I'm going to rake back these cooking stones. And then we're going to take our fish and set it down into the fire. And then we're going to rake these cooking stones back over it again, covering it all up. But before I do that, or before I finish, then we're going to take and we're going to rake this dirt, all this loose dirt, back on top of it again to trump it down. You're putting dirt on the fish? Sure, we got to do that so we can cut the oxygen off. And then it becomes, you're, you're closing the oven door, so it becomes an earthen oven. How long will it take to cook the fish? Most fish cooks in this uh, fire it takes about 45 minutes. Okay. 
leaves. Look at the moisture still trapped in there. Catfish. Try it. That is real hot. Mm, good. good huh? This looks a lot like the knife you were cutting the fish with. Here it's used as a drill bit, you know, a pump drill. We have built a scale model to give you a good feel of what the actual earthworks would look like if you were in the air about a thousand feet. It is, of course, presumed that these folks build their homes. That was the idea of the terracing or these ridges. It's a planned community, very big planned community. Brett, here we are standing on top of the bird mound. This mound measures some 72 feet high. This lower stage we're standing on here would represent the bird's tail. Out here, it's nice and flat and broad. When you hit the stairs, that would be the bird's back. And once you climb the stairs, note one of the wings going out to the right and fully extended then out to the left. Wow. Can you believe it took these people over 30 million basket loads to build this one mound? Priority Point Bird Mound was built eight centuries after the pyramids were built in Egypt. You know, Britt, isn't it nice to think that right here in Louisiana, we had a group of people that were engaged in long-distance trade, created all those neat artifacts, building monumental earthworks. But then after a while, the city grew quiet. We'd like to think that some of those, uh, the Native Americans here in Louisiana today are part of that same bunch. But of course, it's gonna take an awful lot of research Perhaps you may help us try and figure these things out. Yeah, it's been real nice uh, spending time with you today. Been a real pleasure. Enjoy. Thank you too. Goodbye. the Chittimacha Reservation. Hi, I'm Brian Henderson. Hey, I'm Zach LeBlanc. Come and see my school. How many kids are in your school? My school only has 73 students, and all of them live on the reservation. Pre-K through 8. So, Nate, 
Native Americans in times past tried to keep their bowls very, very dry. This is a tribal school, but our classes are a lot like yours. This is my classroom, and here we study math, science, and U.S. history. Uh, say a strip of hide. Look, we have an adventure journal for Gumbawali, and in here it says the first to the Macha school held its classes in a tribal member's home. My grandma attended those classes. She knows a lot about that. She lives right over there. You want to go see her? Oh, in 1932, our children were not able to go to school because there was um, some of the people in the area did not want the Indian children to go to school. So my grandfather had a, a big house, and he especially the hall was huge, and they decided that in the hallway there were, were classes. There's a model at the school of the very first schoolhouse. Can you tell us about that? Well, yes, the one-room school. No running water. The boys had to go out and haul the water about maybe 25 or 30 students at that time. A lot of the children didn't know English. They knew French. They had uh, started learning French from childhood, and the Indian language was not too common. They were losing that language because some of the French around in the area spoke to them in French. Grandma, I think I'll take Brett across the street to my house and show my dance regalia. OK. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mr. Blunt. Hi. This is my room. That's cool. I take it you like planes. Yeah, one day I want to be a pilot. I like to travel, too. I have some pictures here from my trip to Russia last year. These pictures were for the Goodwill Games in St. Petersburg. There are tribes from all over the United States there. I help represent my tribe. Neat. It took me about a year, and I practiced every day, but it was fun. I can show you how my dance regalia looks on me. All right. Wow, that looks great. Thanks. See, these, my dad brought these um, to me from a tribe in North Dakota. I just have one more thing to put on. But dancing is only one of the traditions that Zach is learning. Zach's dad makes drums like this, and he makes uh, Indian jewelry and does a lot of leather work. And of course, the Chittimachas are known mostly for their baskets made out of river cane and split and dyed and woven together. There's an example right there. The back is really the most colorful. These things here are called the bustles. When I jump and twist around the ribbons uh, on the side of the bustles, move around and it makes me makes it look really pretty. <laughs> One more thing we need to mention. The Chittimacha are one of the few Louisiana tribes to live in the territory of their ancestors. Water, game, and weather in Charrington made it easy to stay. Thank you, I had a wonderful time, but I really can't stay. Bye. Bye. You might want to learn the names of the Indian tribes in Louisiana. It might come in handy in our future Gumbo Island adventure. Bye. Gumbo.